Hey everybody, my name is Ashley Rush and I'm an independent creative memories advisor located in North Carolina. Man, I feel like it has been a long time since I've been in this studio, which is funny because I made that same joke last week before I realized I couldn't actually show that footage yet. Um, so I'll have to cut that out. So, um, it's like deja vu. Hey guys, it's been a long time since I've been in my studio. But anyways, um, this week I am back with a safe option that I can definitely show um, on time. I am back with another project recipe video. Now, if you are not familiar with project recipes, this is something that Creative Memories creates for each of their collections. It's made to show off the new collection and the new tool. But the cool thing is, is that you can reuse these recipes over and over and over. Change out the tool, change out the collection, and you'll end up with a totally new set of pages. So I'm actually going to be using the project recipe from, let's see, uh, 2020. So like three years ago for winter woods. So that used the tree line punch. I'm going to be using the new snowy mountain punch. And um, I hope you guys enjoy. To complete this recipe, you're going to need three sheets of coordinating paper. I am using our brand new Nordic winter paper. And then you're going to need two sheets of paper to use as your base. I am using a light gray cardstock. You also need your 12 inch trimmer, your tape runner, and then a border punch of your choice. I am using our brand new snow capped mountains. Um, this would also look great. Well, I mean, I guess depending on what kind of pictures you're using, any of our old mountain ones or old tree line, which is I think what this was designed for, anything that will look good kind of like double layered. The monstera leaves might be really cool, except that that's more of a chain. I don't know, we'll figure that out as we go. I think that this is gonna go really quickly. There are not a lot of cuts. Um, probably can put this all together and I don't know, just a few minutes. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> as I said, I'm using my light gray as my base. So when I do project recipes, I kind of like to start laying those out from the get-go. So I've got my base sheets down. I'm going to cut um, two large borders. So I think this is the sheet I'm gonna use for a border. I'm not sold on this idea quite yet, but you know, we'll figure it out. Um, I kind of think, well, maybe if I used a different background, we'll see. Um, you're gonna make a four and a half inch cut and you're gonna do that twice. So one is gonna go on one side. Okay, no, I think that that is nice. I was worried that there wouldn't be enough distinction, but I think it looks good. So now I'm gonna do the next one again at four and a half inches. All right. This piece is left over. This will make a great border or pieces for cards. So set that aside and use it later. And this goes on the opposite side. All right. Big part of our uh, cutting already done. All right. Now you're going to take your next sheet of decorative paper. Um, for this, you are going to do some um, trim work and you're going to do some punch work. So let's do the punches first. I'm going to get out my snow capped mountains punch. I'm going to release the trigger here in the back. <clears throat> when it's on my table, I'm going to slide the paper here into the punch, rest it on that tray. And I'm going to start my paper um, right here at this little line. You can start on either line. Uh, it's just sort of a what feels good to you type of thing. <clears throat> starting and once you've made that first punch you're going to slide it over you're going to cover up your punch on that little silhouette in the background that's how you know it's lined up and you'll just punch and continue to slide over until you have completed um, your pattern And I've 
I've got this beautiful snow-capped mountain border. I'm going to go ahead and clear this punch poop off. I'm not quite done with my punch, so I'm going to set that aside because I'm going to use it on a different sheet of paper. I'm going to bring my snow-capped border here. I'm going to turn it so that the peaks of my mountains are on my rulers and I'm going to cut this so that it's at one and a quarter inch. Oops, I almost made a mistake there. That's one. I'm going to make sure I'm going to one and a quarter. Got my first set there. <clears throat> now I'm gonna repeat that. I'm gonna punch my border one more time and then I'm gonna cut it at one and a quarter one more time. Now when I'm lining that up to cut, my mountain tops are not the same, so I've got a higher peak and a lower peak. I'm lining up that higher peak at my one and a quarter inch mark. <laughs> I think I'm realizing that I cut despite moving. Oh, maybe I didn't. Did I cut one of them at one and a half instead of one and a quarter? I did. I cut it a little tall. That's okay. Easy to fix. Just took a quarter inch off, evened it out. No harm, no foul. All right, now I'm going to take my remaining large sheet. You wanna arrange it so the shorter side is this way, the 12 inch side is going down alongside your trimmer. You're gonna cut at three and three quarters. All right. You're gonna give that a quarter turn and you're gonna cut it at six. So end up with two nice mats there. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take that remaining piece again, making sure my long side is alongside the cutting arm here. And this time I'm gonna cut at four and a quarter. I've got about a one, one and a half inch piece um, extra, set that aside. I'm gonna give this one a quarter turn and cut it at six. This gives me four different photo mats. Right. These pieces are going somewhere around here. And these guys are more here. Okay. I've got one more sheet to cut and then we are finished and we can start assembling. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to um, use our border again and I'm gonna cut out two strips of the mountains and then I'm gonna cut them to one and a half inches. First strip of the mountain's done. And again, I'm gonna line that up so that that tallest mountain peak is at one and a half. And now we'll just repeat.
So after I cut my mountain strips, I made a little bit of a boo-boo. Um, so I'm starting with a fresh sheet for the rest of those cuts. Let's pretend as if I have already cut um, two strips of those mountains and then cut them at one and a half. Now we're starting over. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna put whatever short end, it'll be around like uh, nine inches. The nine inches part is going around the top of your trimmer and then the the long part is going down the side. Um, we are going to start by making a one and a half inch cut. We're actually going to do that twice. Right, you're gonna take those and you're gonna give them a quarter turn and you're gonna make a seven and a half inch cut. I'm gonna layer mine together because they're the same length and I'm making them the same length here. Just making sure that my edges meet up. Coming all the way over to my seven and a half. These little pieces are extra, you set those aside. Then you've got your seven and a half inch strips. You're going here. And then you're going to take your large leftover piece and you're gonna cut it at four and a half. You've got a large leftover piece, you set that aside. <clears throat> take your four and a half inch give it a quarter turn and now you're going to cut at six all right we have now made all of our cuts and it is time to assemble so we've got these small mats they're actually going to go at the top all the way to the edge to make them look like a continuous sheet of paper across <clears throat> then you have those small strips. They're going at the bottom. Also sort of right on along that edge, making them look like a continuous piece. And they should also line up nicely with your large border pieces here. You'll have a small gap. All right, let's work on our borders for our mountains. You're actually going to layer your mountains together with the smaller one in front and then the taller one in back. Now, if you don't like the look of that gap where you've got it lined up <clears throat> bottom to bottom, you can always cheat that up a little bit, give it just more of like a shadow effect. It's up to you. I like mine a little closer to the top, I think. So once you kind of figure out how you like it layered, The edge piece is actually going to go on over top. And then you'll have that gap I was talking about. And your other mat will go straight up to that large border. And then you'll just repeat on the other side. Once you've got that down, then you've got these nice large mats and those are going to overlap. Here. Just giving you another pop of color. Right. 
All right, so let me, I guess, start adhering. All right, I have finished adhering all of my pieces. Um, I did go ahead, instead of um, putting my border all the way underneath, I trimmed off parts of it because I figured, hey, maybe I could use this on a border or a card, I don't know. So underneath of here, I had just cut, I think instead of doing seven and a half, I did eight so that I would have some leeway, leeway on either end. Um, also, you will see there is like a seam here. There you can see see it better. So there's a seam where the base of your um, punch, your border punch, will meet the um, the border you put down here at the bottom. Now, in my case, like I cheated my green border up because I didn't want as much of a a gap. If I had cheated it all the way down, then there wouldn't have been such a noticeable seam or like maybe a more noticeable but in the right way. Like green meets blue instead of blue meets blue. So you could cover this up with a sticker or maybe a different border punch. Um, or you could maybe have even like cheated that underneath and glued this part on top like where the green base meets. Does that make sense? Was I talking gibberish just now? <clears throat> Okay, so with this layout, there's actually room for eight photos or um, different journaling spots. So they're all around four by six. There is some trimming involved. So first up, we have our mats here. These will fit a five and three quarters by three and a half. Oops. All right, and then depending upon you, you can shoot those right towards the edge as well. Still give them a nice border. And then here in those big spots, we've got room for a five and a half by a four with a nice chunky mat all the way around. All right, and then up here on the corners, we have room for a four by five and a quarter. And then last but not least, we have room for four by sixes underneath. Now these four by sixes are great. You can swap those out for some of our variety map packs if you like, which gives you easy journaling or easy titling. Um, otherwise, you know, we can journal and title here and then up here and then maybe something down here or um, in that general vicinity or maybe let's see here here and here as long as we're doing that triangle and bringing our focus all the way across our page so that's it guys what do you think um just a couple of quick cuts and you've got room for eight photos i think it's a winner i think any two-page spread that can easily allow you to use eight different photos is a winner. What do you guys think? I mean, this is a recipe that I think I can keep repeating. Now, um, let's say you, so I showed you guys how like it kind of met up funny at the bottom because I, I had staggered my border a little differently. Maybe you don't want two borders. That's okay, guys. Like this would look fine with just the green or just the blue. It's up to you. You don't have to shadow. That's just kind of one technique that this recipe was trying to show off. Now, what changes would you guys make? I was kind of thinking like, wouldn't this be fun if you turned it on its side? Now, obviously, wouldn't work with the border punch there or this particular border punch because it's definitely like a this way up kind of punch but I think that could have made an interesting recipe or maybe one on the upside down I don't know it's always fun to sort of rotate these around and see what will happen so that's again so awesome with these recipes if you're changing the tools changing the papers and you get a totally different look keep the tools keep the papers rotate the pages and you get a totally different look. 
All right, guys, that is it for me this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, if you see anything in this video that you want, please check out my Creative Memories website. That's creativememories.com slash cm slash Ashley Rush. And if you want to get more inspiration or get in touch with me, please check out my Facebook and Instagram. That is where I'm posting almost daily content. Um, and it's the best way to reach me one-on-one -on -one, just using that inbox. Um, so, all right, guys, I look forward to seeing you again later next week. Bye.